Good evening everyone, time for another member update. This is silver spot over the US dollar index. You can see a fairly long trend here with a rally from 2011 and the dollar up to today where we've got um, hit about a hundred on the dollar index all the way down from around 74. So that's a 33% increase in the dollar. And then you can see here with silver, you know, a 60 something percent decline. So a drastic difference between the two. Now it would be hard for any type of fundamental investor to argue that you should be buying this and selling this. You should be taking this and buying this. And that's uh, the bottom line. Now, people who have the dollar have a unique opportunity because this, the currency is so strong. If we go and look at silver, let's do silver, for example, in the Japanese yen. And uh, the, the yen has been fairly weak. Uh, you can see that silver doesn't really have the same sort of bear, uh, not as bad, the equivalent of where it was back in the Bear Stearns crisis. That would be the equivalent of $21 if it were in dollars. So there's a significant discount for buyers in dollars buying real physical silver, and it's just a fantastic time to do that. I want to emphasize the difference between paper silver, paper gold, and real silver and real gold. Um, just to give you one example here, this is an interactive stock chart of the two uh, paper, the two major paper silver ETFs. One is ProShares uh, Ultra Short Silver ZSL, and the other one is uh, AGQ, which is Ultra Long Silver. So they don't exactly correspond because one is two times and one is three times, but you can see that they correspond roughly. And this is the five day chart. So you can see when one goes up, the other goes down. Now what's interesting is when we move out further. So the one month we have, we'll compare these by percentages. You've got 12.83% gain in the ZSL and you've got a 13.5% loss in AGQ. So pretty close out to the three month. Uh, one is down 8.5%, the other one's only up 3%. And these are strange discrepancies. Now you can see here down 6% and down 10%. How can they both be down? And uh, then they change year to date. You can see negative 0.76, negative uh, 12. For the yearly, we actually show a gain on the ZSL. But if we keep moving out, if we move out far enough, you can see here we are with negative 71.3% and much, much worse than that. Sorry, that's the cat in the background. So what does this mean? Well, these markets are fake. Here's a negative 51% and Herbie, stop it. Sorry about that. Here's negative 51% and negative 96%. So what gives, what does this mean? Well, it's not real. It's not only not real silver, it's not even a real market. And they have a little disclaimer here. It says the ultra short funds do not seek to achieve their stated objectives or for a period greater than a single day. Seriously, why are you going to invest in something that is only accurate for a day? So you can see here, this is ZSL negative two and AGQ was, is, uh, or I mean, sorry, two times and AGQ is three times. But again, this disclaimer, well, because it's a ripoff and basically everything on Wall Street is a ripoff, um, but they're trying to keep you out of the real thing. They're, they're not gonna give you a market that actually even properly mimics where the market should be. It'd be pretty obvious if you were expecting a rally in silver, you could just go out and buy the AGQ, but you can't hold it for more than a day. So they don't let you play the game. And that's, that's typical because it's a rigged game and it's rigged for them. Now this story here is very interesting. This is a story about Texas 
wanting to pull their billion dollars in gold from the New York Fed and make it so that it's not subject to rehypothecation. So there's some interesting stuff going on down in Texas. Um, not even going to mention the Jade Helm weirdness and some of these, we'll just call them uh, false flag hoax psyop type things where you have a bunch of bikers standing around that look like police officers and this latest thing of a guy. I, I you know, I don't really even follow these too much anymore because they're they're so laughable. But there's definitely something going on down in Texas and let's read some of this. There are precisely two important reasons. One involves distrust in the current storage system. The second threatens the paper money system as a whole. Quote, in a lot of cases with gold, you may not have clear title to the metal. You may have a counterparty relationship that makes you a creditor. If the counterparty has a problem unrelated to gold, they can default, and then you become an unsecured creditor in bankruptcy, said Keith Weiner, president of the Gold Standard Institute. This means you get whatever is left after liquidation, often just a fraction of the initial value of your holdings. This exact scenario happened with the futures broker MF Global. I knew people who had warehouse receipts to gold bars with a specific serial number, but that gold had an encumbered title and they became unsecured creditors in bankruptcy. In Texas, two big public pension funds from the University of Texas and Teachers Retirement System own gold worth more than a billion dollars. Being uncomfortable with holding purely financial gold in the form of futures and exchange traded funds. There you go. There's a ripoff that we just looked at. The University of Texas actually took delivery of the gold bars in 2011 and warehoused it with HSBC in New York. At the time, pension fund board member and hedge fund manager Kyle Bass explained, quote, as a fiduciary, which I am in that position to the extent you own gold, you're going for a long time and it's not a trade. We looked at the COMEX at the time and they had about $80 billion of open interest between futures and futures options. In the warehouse, they had about $2.7 billion in deliverables. We're going to own it a long time. You are on the board, you're a fiduciary. So that's an easy one, you go get it. Bass is implying that there is much more financial gold out there than there is physical. Uh, now just think about silver. And that is prudent to actually hold the physical. Taking the gold to Texas would then also solve counterparty risk. In this case, it's going to be a depository the gold is going to be there. They are not going to be able to lend it out and it won't serve as collateral for other transactions of the bank, said Victor Sperando of trading firm EAM Partners, because if the bank closes, you are screwed. Quote, I think that somebody was looking at that. We better have this under our complete control, said constitutional lawyer and gold expert Edwin Vieira of the Texas Bill. They don't want to have the gold in some bank somewhere and in two or five years, it turns out not to be there. So for most for most of the attention is focused on I'm sorry so far most of the attention has focused on the part of the depository and the big institutions however the bill also includes a provision to prevent seizure which is important for private parties who want to avoid another 1933 style confiscation of their bullion by federal authorities section A2116 states a purported confiscation requisition seizure or other attempt to control the ownership is void ab initio and of no force or effect. Effectively, the state of Texas will protect any gold stored in a depository from the federal government. And free from the threat of confiscation, private citizens can use gold and silver as money, completely bypassing the paper money system. Quote, people can legally do that with gold contracts. The difficulty is the implementation. Now Texas has set up a mechanism with a depository. We have accounts in that institution and can easily transfer back and forth certain accounts. We can run our money system a gold or silver basis if we are so inclined, said Vieira. This would not be possible if the gold is stored in a bank because of the risk of bank holidays and bankruptcies. It would also not be possible if the federal government could confiscate the gold. According to Vieira, this anti-seizure provision rests on Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution of the United States, which obliges states to not make anything tender in payment of debts apart from gold and silver coin. Quote, if someone from the Department of Justice comes along, you're going to see legal and political fireworks. The state is going to say, 
We need to have a mechanism to make gold and silver money. This is pursuant to constitutional provision we have. You can't touch this. Our state power on the constitutional level is more powerful than any statute you may pass, Vieira said. Because one of the litigant parties is a state, the case would go directly to the Supreme Court. Quote, we're talking about something completely new in terms of the legal playing field. This is no longer a fringe concept, he adds, but cautions about a possible fight with the federal government. We will have to see how committed the governor and the attorney general are. And there's the official statement from Governor Abbott. Yeah, this is this is a big deal. This has been kind of brewing for a while. And think about this. One billion dollars. Okay, that is absolutely peanuts. Um, now, if you think about one billion dollars in silver... How much is that? That's 66 million ounces of silver. Okay, that's that's more than the silver eagles. Well, that's that's a lot more than we mine every year. And uh, that's more than they sell in silver eagles. So if, if you think this is a big story with gold, you can just imagine what it would be like if it were a story with silver. And uh, that, you know, the temptation is for others to mimic this. Uh, to put the things out of the bank. There's really no reason to use banks anymore. They don't pay any interest. And so this is just another story of people putting money under the mattress, basically, and putting it in a depository, not linking it to any financial assets. There's no reason to do so. There's no benefit. So this is this is more cracks in the system starting to come. They've, they've run their fake paper gold and paper silver games for quite a while now uh, as as the music starts to stop the people are looking for chairs to get into they know that it's as Jeffrey Christian stated it's rehypothecated a hundredfold I personally think that silver's probably rehypothecated even a thousandfold and uh, what does that mean well it should mean ultimately that we're gonna go a hundredfold or a thousandfold from here it's quite possible um, so I wanted to take a look at the coin that I picked up recently. This is the the Perth Mint half ounce uh, year of the goat. I got mine from JM Bullion. They were 1203, but you can see that uh, Provident, and I believe they're out, but double check and make sure they might have got some more in. Uh, Provident Metals does have 654 of them, you can see, and they're 1221. Still a fantastic price. Yes, you're paying $24, but if you look at the horses from the last ones we picked up, the cheapest they are right now are 18, 19, and 20. The half ounce dragons are around 30 bucks. The snakes, I don't even know where they are. They, you can't find a price on them. So it's between this one and the two ounce ones. The last time we bought, we bought the two ounce ones for about 43 bucks. So we paid around 21.50 an ounce. These are around 24 to $25 an ounce. But still, I think the potential being the half ounce coin, um, there's a great potential there. Now, I don't think that you're going to see these again. I may be wrong, but I believe that when these are gone, uh, this is what happened with the horses. If you remember, when the members bought up all the horses, we didn't see the horses come back for a number of months. And then when they came back, they were repriced. They were back. They were up about $7 a coin higher. Uh, I think the same thing will probably happen with these half ounce goats. Um, they'll probably not be available once they're gone. There's about 700 here. I think there's maybe a couple hundred left on Atmex, and, and so maybe there's a thousand of these left floating around in America. Um, if you're in Australia, you, you've got uh, better options, but uh, probably only a thousand left in America. I think when these are gone, they're going to be gone probably until August or September when they start looking at the next year's coin coming out and then you'll see them put some of these back on perhaps ones that they've socked away uh, that may be the case or it might be ones that they bought back but I expect this one to disappear and I think that this one will be a quick uh, a quick profit for the members so uh, again the dollar index is about as high as it can get the Dow is about as high as it can get we're talking about crazy crazy bubbles here and they've managed to keep things going i'm going to be the first one to admit that their ability to keep these things going has boggled my mind i cannot believe 
that they have been able to do this. Of course, they pulled out of the stops. Um, if you think about FOFOA and FOA and the idea that um, that by a back channel they needed to support the petrodollar by uh, shipping their gold overseas, kind of sort of like this Texas thing. Well, if you think about how many of these oil countries, whether it's Saudi Arabia or Oman or um, UAE or any of these countries, how many of these countries left their gold in Europe, left their gold in Britain, left their gold in America and let them store it there? And how many of them said, well, no, we want our gold, we want to store it here? Well, I think you'll probably find out if you dig deep enough that the ones that had their gold there, such as Libya and Egypt and some of the others, those are the ones where they went in and invaded or through the government and took back the gold. So this is the kind of game we're playing, and that is kind of a very, very scary concept if you think about what's going on in Texas right now and this Jade Helm thing going on and how all these false flag psyops are going on in Texas as well. So things are heating up, but uh, there's still time to stack, and there's still a very good, uh, very good buy on those goats right now. And we'll talk to you next time.